Progressivism in the United States is a broadly based reform movement that reached its height early in the 20th century. It was middle class and reformist in nature. It arose as a response to the vast changes brought by modernization, such as the growth of large corporations, pollution and fears of corruption in American politics. In the 21st century, progressives continue to embrace concepts such as environmentalism and social justice. Much of the movement has been rooted in and energized by religion. Historian Alonzo Hamby defined American progressivism as the political movement that addresses ideas, impulses, and issues stemming from modernization of American society. Emerging at the end of the 19th century, it established much of the tone of American politics throughout the first half of the century. Topic: <laughs> Progressive Era. Historians debate the exact contours, but generally date the «progressive era» from the 1890s to either World War I or the onset of the Great Depression. In response to the perceived excesses of the Gilded Age, many of the core principles of the progressive movement focused on the need for efficiency in all areas of society. Purification to eliminate waste and corruption was a powerful element, as well as the progressive support of worker compensation, improved child labor laws, minimum wage legislation, a support for a maximum hours that workers could work for, graduated income tax and allowed women the right to vote, according to historian William Leuchtenberg. The progressives believed in the Hamiltonian concept of positive government, of a national government directing the destinies of the nation at home and abroad. They had little but contempt for the strict construction of the Constitution by conservative judges, who would restrict the power of the national government to act against social evils and to extend the blessings of democracy to less favored lands. The real enemy was particularism, state rights, limited government. <laughs> Purifying the electorate Progressives repeatedly warned that illegal voting was corrupting the political system. They especially identified big city bosses, working with saloon keepers and precinct workers, as the culprits who stuffed the ballot boxes. The solution to purifying the vote included prohibition designed to close down the saloons, voter registration requirements designed to end multiple voting, and literacy tests designed to minimize the number of ignorant voters. All of the southern states and Oklahoma used devices to disenfranchise black voters during the progressive era. Typically the progressive elements in those states pushed for disenfranchisement, often fighting against the conservatism of the black belt whites. A major reason given was that whites routinely purchased black votes to control elections, and it was easier to disenfranchise blacks than to go after powerful white men. In the North, progressives such as William Uren and Robert La Follette argued that the average citizen should have more control over his government. The Oregon system of initiative, referendum, and recall was exported to many states, including Idaho, Washington, and Wisconsin. Many progressives, such as George M. Forbes, president of Rochester's Board of Education, hoped to make government in the U.S. more responsive to the direct voice of the American people when he said, W.E. are now intensely occupied in forging the tools of democracy, the direct primary, the initiative, the referendum, the recall, the short ballot, commission government. But in our enthusiasm we do not seem to be aware that these tools will be worthless unless they are used by those who are aflame with the sense of brotherhood. The idea of the social center's movement is to establish in each community an institution having a direct and vital relation to the welfare of the neighborhood, ward, or district, and also to the city as a whole. Philip J. Ethington seconds this high view of direct democracy saying, Initiatives, referendums, and recalls, along with direct primaries and the direct election of U.S. Senators, were the core achievements of direct democracy by the progressive generation during the first two decades of the 20th century. Progressives fought for women's suffrage to purify the elections using supposedly pure female voters. Progressives in the South supported the elimination of supposedly corrupt black voters from the election booth. Historian Michael Perman says that in both Texas and Georgia, "...disfranchisement was the weapon as well as the rallying cry in the fight for reform." And in Virginia, the drive for disfranchisement had been initiated by men who saw themselves as reformers, even progressives. While the ultimate significance of the progressive movement on today's politics is still up for debate, Alonzo L. Hamby asks, 
What were the central themes that emerged from the cacophony of progressivism? Democracy or elitism? Social justice or social control? Small entrepreneurship or concentrated capitalism? And what was the impact of American foreign policy? Were the progressives isolationists or interventionists? Imperialists or advocates of national self-determination? And whatever they were, what was their motivation? Moralistic utopianism? Muddled relativistic pragmatism? Hegemonic capitalism? Not surprisingly many battered scholars began to shout no moss. In 1970, Peter Filene declared that the term progressivism had become meaningless. Topic: <laughs> Municipal Administration. The progressives typically concentrated on city and state government, looking for waste and better ways to provide services as the cities grew rapidly. These changes led to a more structured system, power that had been centralized within the legislature would now be more locally focused. The changes were made to the system to effectively make legal processes, market transactions, bureaucratic administration, and democracy easier to manage, thus putting them under the classification of municipal administration. There was also a change in authority for this system, it was believed that the authority that was not properly organized had now given authority to professionals, experts, and bureaucrats for these services. These changes led to a more solid type of municipal administration compared to the old system that was underdeveloped and poorly constructed. The progressives mobilized concerned middle class voters, as well as newspapers and magazines, to identify problems and concentrate reform sentiment on specific problems. Many Protestants focused on the saloon as the power base for corruption, as well as violence and family disruption, so they tried to get rid of the entire saloon system through prohibition. Others like Jane Addams in Chicago, promoted settlement houses. Early municipal reformers included Hazen S. Pingree mayor of Detroit in the 1890s and Tom L. Johnson in Cleveland, Ohio. In 1901, Johnson won election as mayor of Cleveland on a platform of just taxation, home rule for Ohio cities, and a three-cent streetcar fare. Columbia University President Seth Lowe was elected mayor of New York City in 1901 on a reform ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Efficiency Many progressives such as Louis Brandeis hoped to make American governments better able to serve the people's needs by making governmental operations and services more efficient and rational. Rather than making legal arguments against 10-hour workdays for women, he used scientific principles and data produced by social scientists documenting the high costs of long working hours for both individuals and society. The progressives' quest for efficiency was sometimes at odds with the progressives' quest for democracy. Taking power out of the hands of elected officials and placing that power in the hands of professional administrators reduced the voice of the politicians and in turn reduced the voice of the people. Centralized decision-making by trained experts and reduced power for local wards made government less corrupt but more distant and isolated from the people it served. Progressives who emphasized the need for efficiency typically argued that trained independent experts could make better decisions than the local politicians. Thus Walter Lippmann in his influential Drift and Mastery 1914, stressing the scientific spirit and discipline of democracy called for a strong central government guided by experts rather than public opinion. One example of progressive reform was the rise of the city manager system, in which paid, professional engineers ran the day-to-day -day affairs of city governments under guidelines established by elected city councils. Many cities created municipal reference bureaus, which did expert surveys of government departments looking for waste and inefficiency. After in-depth surveys, local and even state governments were reorganized to reduce the number of officials and to eliminate overlapping areas of authority between departments. City governments were reorganized to reduce the power of local ward bosses and to increase the powers of the city council. Governments at every level began developing budgets to help them plan their expenditures rather than spending money haphazardly as needs arose and revenue became available. Governor Frank Lowden of Illinois showed a passion for efficiency, as he streamlined state government. <inaudible> <inaudible> Movements to eliminate governmental corruption Corruption represented a source of waste and inefficiency in the government. 
William Uren in Oregon, and Robert M. La Follette Sr. in Wisconsin, and others worked to clean up state and local governments by passing laws to weaken the power of machine politicians and political bosses. In Wisconsin, La Follette pushed through an open primary system that stripped party bosses of the power to pick party candidates. The Oregon system, which included a Corrupt Practices Act, a public referendum, and a state-funded voters' pamphlet among other reforms was exported to other states in the Northwest and Midwest. Its high point was in 1912, after which they detoured into a disastrous third-party status. Topic. Education Early progressive thinkers such as John Dewey and Lester Ward placed a universal and comprehensive system of education at the top of the progressive agenda, reasoning that if a democracy were to be successful, its leaders, the general public, needed a good education. Progressives worked hard to expand and improve public and private education at all levels. Modernization of society, they believed, necessitated the compulsory education of all children, even if the parents objected. Progressives turned to educational researchers to evaluate the reform agenda by measuring numerous aspects of education, later leading to standardized testing. Many educational reforms and innovations generated during this period continued to influence debates and initiatives in American education for the remainder of the 20th century. One of the most apparent legacies of the progressive era left to American education was the perennial drive to reform schools and curricula, often as the product of energetic grassroots movements in the city, since progressivism was and continues to be in the eyes of the beholder. Progressive education encompasses very diverse and sometimes conflicting directions in educational policy. Such enduring legacies of the progressive era continue to interest historians. Progressive era reformers stressed object teaching, meeting the needs of particular constituencies within the school district, equal educational opportunity for boys and girls, and avoiding corporal punishment. Gamson 2003 examines the implementation of progressive reforms in three city school districts Seattle, Washington, Oakland, California, and Denver, Colorado during 1900 28. Historians of educational reform during the Progressive Era tend to highlight the fact that many progressive policies and reforms were very different and, at times, even contradictory. At the school district level, contradictory reform policies were often especially apparent, though there is little evidence of confusion among progressive school leaders in Seattle, Oakland, and Denver. District leaders in these cities, including Frank B. Cooper in Seattle and Fred M. Hunter in Oakland, often employed a seemingly contradictory set of reforms. Local progressive educators consciously sought to operate independently of national progressive movements, they preferred reforms that were easy to implement, and they were encouraged to mix and blend diverse reforms that had been shown to work in other cities. The reformers emphasized professionalization and bureaucratization. The old system whereby ward politicians selected school employees was dropped in the case of teachers and replaced by a merit system requiring a college-level education in a normal school teacher's college. The rapid growth in size and complexity the large urban school systems facilitated stable employment for women teachers and provided senior teachers greater opportunities to mentor younger teachers. By 1900 in Providence, Rhode Island, most women remained as teachers for at least 17.5 years, indicating teaching had become a significant and desirable career path for women. <laughs> Regulation of large corporations and monopolies Many progressives hoped that by regulating large corporations they could liberate human energies from the restrictions imposed by industrial capitalism. Yet the progressive movement was split over which of the following solutions should be used to regulate corporations. <laughs> Trust busting Pro-labor progressives such as Samuel Gompers argued that industrial monopolies were unnatural economic institutions which suppressed the competition which was necessary for progress and improvement. United States antitrust law is the body of laws that prohibits anti-competitive behavior monopoly and unfair business practices. Presidents Theodore Roosevelt and William Howard Taft supported trust busting. During their presidencies, the otherwise conservative Taft brought down 90 trusts in four years while Roosevelt took down 44 in seven and a half years in office. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Regulation. Progressives such as Benjamin Park DeWitt argued that in a modern economy, large corporations and even monopolies were both inevitable and desirable. With their massive resources and economies of scale, large corporations offered the U.S. advantages which smaller companies could not offer. Yet, these large corporations might abuse their great power. The federal government should allow these companies to exist but regulate them for the public interest. President Theodore Roosevelt generally supported this idea and was later to incorporate it as part of his new nationalism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Social work. Progressives set up training programs to ensure that welfare and charity work would be undertaken by trained professionals rather than warm hearted amateurs. Jane Addams of Chicago's Hull House typified the leadership of residential, community centers operated by social workers and volunteers and located in inner city slums. The purpose of the settlement houses was to raise the standard of living of urbanites by providing adult education and cultural enrichment programs. Topic. Enactment of child labor laws Child labor laws were designed to prevent the overuse of children in the newly emerging industries. The goal of these laws was to give working class children the opportunity to go to school and mature more institutionally, thereby liberating the potential of humanity and encouraging the advancement of humanity. Factory owners generally did not want this progression because of lost workers. They used Charles Dickens as a symbol that the working conditions spark imagination. This initiative failed, with child labor laws being enacted anyway. Topic. Support for the goals of organized labor Labor unions grew steadily until 1916, then expanded fast during the war. In 1919 a wave of major strikes alienated the middle class, the strikes were lost, which alienated the workers. In the 1920s the unions were in the doldrums, in 1924 they supported La Follette's Progressive Party, but he only carried his base in Wisconsin. The American Federation of Labor under Samuel Gompers after 1907 began supporting the Democrats, who promised more favorable judges. The Republicans appointed pro-business judges. Theodore Roosevelt and his third party also supported such goals as the eight-hour work day, improved safety and health conditions in factories, workers' compensation laws, and minimum wage laws for women. Prohibition <inaudible> 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 <inaudible)> Most progressives, especially in rural areas, adopted the cause of prohibition. They saw the saloon as political corruption incarnate, and bewailed the damage done to women and children. They believed the consumption of alcohol limited mankind's potential for advancement. Progressives achieved success first with state laws then with the enactment of the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1919. The golden day did not dawn, enforcement was lax, especially in the cities where the law had very limited popular support and where notorious criminal gangs, such as the Chicago Gang of Al Capone made a crime spree based on illegal sales of liquor in speakeasies. The experiment, as President Hoover called it, also cost the Treasury large sums of taxes and the 18th Amendment was repealed by the 21st Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1933. Topic. Eugenics Some progressives sponsored eugenics as a solution to excessively large or underperforming families, hoping that birth control would enable parents to focus their resources on fewer, better children. Progressive leaders like Herbert Crowley and Walter Lippmann indicated their classically liberal concern over the danger posed to the individual by the practice of eugenics. Topic. Conservation During the term of the progressive president Theodore Roosevelt 1901 and influenced by the ideas of philosopher-scientists such as George Perkins Marsh, John Wesley Powell, John Muir, Lester Frank Ward and W. J. McGee, the largest government-funded conservation-related projects in U.S. history were undertaken. Topic. 
National parks and wildlife refuges On March 14, 1903, President Roosevelt created the first National Bird Preserve, the beginning of the wildlife refuge system, on Pelican Island, Florida. In all, by 1909, the Roosevelt administration had created an unprecedented 42 million acres square kilometers of United States national forests, 53 national wildlife refuges and 18 areas of special interest, such as the Grand Canyon. Reclamation In addition, Roosevelt approved the Newlands Reclamation Act of 1902, which gave subsidies for irrigation in 13 eventually 20 western states. Another conservation-oriented bill was the Antiquities Act of 1906 that protected large areas of land by allowing the president to declare areas meriting protection to be national monuments. The Inland Waterways Commission was appointed by Roosevelt on March 14, 1907 to study the river systems of the United States, including the development of water power, flood control, and land reclamation. <laughs> <laughs> National politics In the early 20th century, politicians of the Democratic and Republican parties, Lincoln Roosevelt League Republicans in California and Theodore Roosevelt's 1912 Progressive Bull Moose Party all pursued environmental, political, and economic reforms. Chief among these aims was the pursuit of trust busting, the breaking up very large monopolies, and support for labor unions, public health programs, decreased corruption in politics, and environmental conservation. The progressive movement enlisted support from both major parties and from minor parties as well. One leader, Democrat William Jennings Bryan, had won both the Democratic Party and the Populist Party nominations in 1896. At the time, the great majority of other major leaders had been opposed to populism. When Roosevelt left the Republican Party in 1912, he took with him many of the intellectual leaders of progressivism, but very few political leaders. The Republican Party then became notably more committed to business-oriented and efficiency-oriented progressivism, typified by Taft and Herbert Hoover. Culture The foundation of the progressive tendency was indirectly linked to the unique philosophy of pragmatism, which was primarily developed by John Dewey and William James. Equally significant to progressive era reform were the crusading journalists, known as muckrakers. These journalists publicized, to middle class readers, economic privilege, political corruption, and social injustice. Their articles appeared in McClure's magazine and other reform periodicals. Some muckrakers focused on corporate abuses. Ida Tarbell, for instance, exposed the activities of the Standard Oil Company. In The Shame of the Cities 1904, Lincoln Steffens dissected corruption in city government. In Following the Color Line 1908, Ray Standard Baker criticized race relations. Other muckrakers assailed the Senate, railroad companies, insurance companies, and fraud in patent medicine. Novelists, too, criticized corporate injustices. Theodore Dracer drew harsh portraits of a type of ruthless businessman in The Financier 1912 and The Titan 1914. In The Jungle 1906, socialist Upton Sinclair repelled readers with descriptions of Chicago's meatpacking plants, and his work led to support for remedial food safety legislation. Leading intellectuals also shaped the progressive mentality. In Dynamic Sociology 1883, Lester Frank Ward laid out the philosophical foundations of the progressive movement and attacked the laissez-faire policies advocated by Herbert Spencer and William Graham Sumner. In The Theory of the Leisure Class 1899, Thorstein Veblen attacked the conspicuous consumption of the wealthy. Educator John Dewey emphasized a child-centered philosophy of pedagogy, known as progressive education, which affected schoolrooms for three generations. Progressivism in the 21st century Mitigating income inequality Income inequality in the United States has been on the rise since 1970, as the wealthy continue to hold more and more wealth and income. 
For example, 95% of income gains from 2009 to 2013 went to the top 1% of wage earners in the United States. Progressives have recognized that lower union rates, weak policy, globalization, and other drivers have caused the gap in income. The rise of income inequality has led progressives to draft legislation including, but not limited to, reforming Wall Street, reforming the tax code, reforming campaign finance, closing loopholes, and keeping domestic work. <laughs> Wall Street reform Progressives began to demand stronger Wall Street regulation after they perceived deregulation and relaxed enforcement as leading to the financial crisis of 2008. Passing the Dodd-Frank Financial Regulatory Act in 2010 provided increased oversight on financial institutions and the creation of new regulatory agencies, but many progressives argue its broad framework allows for financial institutions to continue to take advantage of consumers and the government. Bernie Sanders, among others, has advocated to re-implement Glass-Steagall for its stricter regulation and to break up the banks because of financial institutions' market share being concentrated in fewer corporations than progressives would like. <laughs> <laughs> Health care reform In 2009, the Congressional Progressive Caucus outlined five key health care principles they intended to pass into law. The CPC mandated a nationwide public option, affordable health insurance, insurance market regulations, an employer insurance provision mandate, and comprehensive services for children. In March 2010, Congress passed the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which was intended to increase the affordability and efficiency of the United States health care system. Although considered a success by progressives, many argued that it didn't go far enough in achieving health care reform, as exemplified with the Democrats' failure in achieving a national public option. In recent decades, single-payer health care has become an important goal in health care reform for progressives. In the 2016 Democratic primary, progressive Democratic Socialist presidential candidate Bernie Sanders raised the issue of a single-payer health care system, citing his belief that millions of Americans are still paying too much for health insurance, and arguing that millions more don't receive the care they need. In 2016, an effort was made to implement a single-payer health care system in the state of Colorado, known as ColoradoCare Amendment 69. Senator Bernie Sanders held rallies in Colorado in support of the amendment leading up to the vote. Despite high-profile support, Amendment 69 failed to pass, with just 21.23% of voting Colorado residents voting in favor, and 78.77% against. <laughs> Minimum wage Adjusted for inflation, the minimum wage peaked in 1968 at $8.54 in 2014 dollars. Progressives believe that stagnating wages perpetuate income inequality and that raising the minimum wage is a necessary step to combat inequality. If the minimum wage grew at the rate of productivity growth in the United States, it would be $21.72 an hour, nearly three times as much as the current $7.25 an hour. Popular progressives, such as Senator Bernie Sanders and Rep. Keith Ellison, have endorsed a federally mandated wage increase to $15 an hour. The movement has already seen success with its implementation in California with the passing of bill to raise the minimum wage $1 every year until reaching $15 an hour in 2021. New York workers are lobbying for similar legislation as many continue to rally for a minimum wage increase as part of the fight for $15 movement. Topic. Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter is an international activist group that fights against police brutality and systemic racism. Black Lives Matter has organized protests against the deaths of African Americans by police actions and crimes. These include protests against the deaths of Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, and Corin Gaines. Definition 
With the rise in popularity of self-proclaimed progressives such as Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, the term began to carry greater cultural currency, particularly in the 2016 Democratic primaries. While answering a question from CNN moderator Anderson Cooper regarding her willingness to shift positions during an October 2015 debate, Hillary Clinton referred to herself as a progressive who likes to get things done, drawing the ire of a number of Sanders supporters and other critics from her left. Questions about the precise meaning of the term have persisted within the Democratic Party and without since the election of Donald Trump in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, with some candidates using it to indicate their affiliation with the left flank of the party. As such, progressive and progressivism are essentially contested concepts, with different groups and individuals defining the terms in different and sometimes contradictory ways towards different and sometimes contradictory ends. Other progressive parties Following the first progressive movement of the early 20th century, two later short-lived parties have also identified as progressive. Progressive Party, 1924 In 1924 Wisconsin Senator Robert Lane Follett ran for president on the «Progressive Party» ticket. La Follette won the support of labor unions, Germans and socialists by his crusade. He carried only Wisconsin and the party vanished outside Wisconsin, there, it remained a force until the 1940s. <laughs> Progressive Party, 1948 A third party was initiated in 1948 by former Vice President Henry A. Wallace as a vehicle for his campaign for president. He saw the two parties as reactionary and warmongering, and attracted support from left-wing voters who opposed the Cold War policies that had become a national consensus. Most liberals, New Dealers, and especially the CIO unions, denounced the party because it was increasingly controlled by communists. It faded away after winning 2% of the vote in 1948. See also Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading Topic Overviews Buenker, John D., John C. Burnham, and Robert M. Crundon. Progressivism 1986 Short Overview Buenker, John D. and Joseph Buenker, eds. Encyclopedia of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era, 2005-1290 pp, in three volumes. 900 articles by 200 scholars Buenker, John D. ed. Dictionary of the Progressive Era 1980, short articles by scholars Chambers, John Whiteclay, 2. The Tyranny of Change, America in the Progressive Era, 1890-1920 2000, textbook excerpt and text search Crundon, Robert M. Ministers of Reform, The Progressive's Achievement in American Civilization, 1889-1920 excerpt and text search Dolly, Allen. Changing the World, American Progressives in War and Revolution 2003 excerpt and text search Diner, Stephen J. A. Very Different Age, Americans of the Progressive Era 1998 excerpt and text search Flanagan, Maureen. America Reformed, Progressives and Progressivisms, 1890s to 1920s 2007. Gilmore, Glenda Elizabeth. Who Were the Progressives? 2002, Gould, Lewis L. America in the Progressive Era, 1890-1914 excerpt and text search Gould, Lewis L. Ed., The Progressive Era 1974, Essays by Scholars Hayes, Samuel P. The Response to Industrialism, 1885-1914 Old but Influential Short Survey Hofstadter, Richard The Age of Reform 1954, Pulitzer Prize, but now sadly outdated Jensen, Richard. 
Democracy, Republicanism and Efficiency, The Values of American Politics, 1885–1930, in Byron Schaefer and Anthony Badger, eds. Contesting Democracy, Substance and Structure in American Political History, 1775–2000 U of Kansas Press, 2001 pp. 149–80, online version Johnston, Robert D. Redemocratizing the Progressive Era, The Politics of Progressive Era Political Historiography, Journal of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era 2002 1 No. 1 pp. 68–92 Kennedy, David M. Ed., Progressivism, The Critical Issues 1971, Readings Kloppenberg, James T. Uncertain Victory, Social Democracy and Progressivism in European and American Thought, 1870-1920-1986 Online at ACLSE Books Luchtenberg, William E. Progressivism and Imperialism, The Progressive Movement and American Foreign Policy, 1898 to 1916. The Mississippi Valley Historical Review, Vol. 39, No. 3, Dec. 1952, pp. 483-504. JSTOR Lears, T.J. Jackson. Rebirth of a Nation, The Remaking of Modern America, 1877-1920 2009 Excerpt and Text Search Link, Arthur S. Woodrow Wilson and the Progressive Era, 1913-1917 Standard Scholarly Survey Link, Arthur S. Wilson, The Road to the White House 1947, First Volume of Standard Biography to 1917, Wilson, The New Freedom 1956, Wilson, The Struggle for Neutrality, 1914-1915 1960, Wilson, Confusions and Crises, 1915-1916 Wilson, Campaigns for Progressivism and Peace, 1916-1917 The last volume of Standard Biography, all five volumes are online free if you have an account at ACLSE Books Man, Arthur, ed., The Progressive Era 1975, Readings from Scholars Lash, Christopher. The True and Only Heaven, Progress and Its Critics 1991 excerpt and text search McGurr, Michael. A Fierce Discontent, The Rise and Fall of the Progressive Movement in America, 1870-1920 2003 excerpt and text search Maury, George. The Era of Theodore Roosevelt and the Birth of Modern America, 1900-1912 General Survey of Era Nagel, Burl. The Twenties, A New Historiographical Frontier. The Journal of American History, Vol. 53, No. 2, Sep. 1966, pp. 299-314, in JSTOR Painter, Nell Irvin. Standing at Armageddon, The United States, 1877-1919 excerpt and text search Perry, Elizabeth Israels and Karen Manners Smith, eds. The Gilded Age and Progressive Era, A Student Companion 2006, Pyatt, Stephen. American Reformers 1870-1920 2006. 240 pp. Biographies of Twelve Leaders Online Review Rogers, Daniel T. Atlantic Crossings, Social Politics in a Progressive Age 2000, Stresses Links with Europe Online Edition Schutz, Aaron. Social Class, Social Action, and Education, The Failure of Progressive Democracy, 2010 Introduction Stromquist, Shelton. Reinventing the People, The Progressive Movement, The Class Problem and the Origins of Modern Liberalism 2006 excerpt and text search Thelen, David P. Social Tensions and the Origins of Progressivism. Journal of American History 56 1969, 323-341 JSTOR Wiebe, Robert. The Search for Order, 1877-1920 Highly Influential Interpretation Young, Jeremy C. The Age of Charisma, Leaders, Followers, and Emotions in American Society, 1870-1940 Excerpt and Text Search Topic National Politics Bloom, John Morton The Republican Roosevelt, 1954 Series of essays that examine how T.R. did politics brands, H.W. Theodore Roosevelt, 2001, Biography Online Edition Buenker, John D. and Joseph Buenker, eds. Encyclopedia of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era. Sharp Reference, 2005. XXXII plus 1256 pp, in three volumes. ISBN 0-7656-8051-3.
900 articles by 200 scholars Buenker, John D., ed. Dictionary of the Progressive Era 1980, Cox, Catherine, Peter C. Holleran and Alan Lessoff. Historical Dictionary of the Progressive Era 2009, Clements, Kendrick A. The Presidency of Woodrow Wilson 1992, excerpt and text search Coletta, Paolo. The Presidency of William Howard Taft 1990, excerpt and text search Cooper, John Milton The Warrior and the Priest, Woodrow Wilson and Theodore Roosevelt, 1983, influential dual biography excerpt and text search Edwards, Barry C. Putting Hoover on the Map, was the 31st President a Progressive, Congress and the Presidency 41 No. 1 2014, pp 49-83 Online Gould, Lewis L. The Presidency of Theodore Roosevelt 1991, excerpt and text search Harris Robert. Congress, Progressive Reform, and the New American State 2004 excerpt and text search Hofstadter, Richard. The American Political Tradition 1948, ch. 8-10 on Bryan, Roosevelt and Wilson, excerpt and text search Link, Arthur Stanley. Woodrow Wilson and the Progressive Era, 1910-1917 Standard History Morris, Edmund Theodore Rex, 2001, very well-written biography of Theodore Roosevelt covers 1901-1909 excerpt and text search Maori, George E. Theodore Roosevelt and the Progressive Movement, 2001 Standard History of 1912 Movement Sanders, Elizabeth Roots of Reform, Farmers, Workers and the American State, 1877–1917 excerpt and text search Walworth, Arthur 1958. Woodrow Wilson, Volume 1, Volume 2. Longmans, Green, 904 pp, full-scale scholarly biography, winner of Pulitzer Prize, online free second ed. 1965 External links Progressive Republicans What is Progressive? Alternate Opinion Piece, July 25, 2005 Common Dreams List of Progressive Websites by Popularity 500 Leading Progressive Organizations in the United States by Category The Empathic Science Institute — The Starting Point for a Progressive Methodology for Political Science the 50 Most Influential Progressives of the 20th Century, Part 1, Part 2, Part 3 — Slideshows by the Nation